and welcome back to Adobe Live. So great to have you all here on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. I was like, what day is it? Since quarantine started, I can't even remember what day it is. But today I am joined by my new best friend, Benny Bustrom. Is that how you yes. say it? Uh, Bustrom. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know the struggle with the last names. I have one of those weird letters in yeah. my last name as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to have you here. Before we uh, start with the stream and before I give you the chance to introduce yourself, let's just have a few words for the folks watching at home because this live stream is best watched on behance.net slash Adobe Live. I will put that link right there, there we go. Go to behance.net slash Adobe Live to join the chat because I honestly can't have two chats. So YouTube chat, come on over to Behance if you want to join the conversation. And second of all, let's take a look at who is joining us today. Caroline says, hi, Benny and Tim. Gareth, the Benny Tim show. Yes, Sean, great to have you. Tim is working hard today. Guest on the German stream and hosting the UK. Yes. I had a German stream earlier. I hope to do the same one in English, but I won't reveal what we did yet. <laughs> and, um, oh, well, Sean reviewed it. Photoshop Pro Tips with Tim. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Dear. So, yes, thank you so much for joining us today. And, like I said, I'm joined by my new best friend. And, Benny, Benny, why don't you tell us who you are and what the plan for today's stream is? And we can go over to your screen so you can we can show a bit of your work. How about that? Sure thing. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm sitting here on in my countryside hole, uh, house, and I'm a little bit pumped up because actually uh, this morning I I saw a lynx. Uh, sorry, last morning uh, it was standing about like five meters from from oh. my window. It was early in the morning. So I actually managed to get it on film and a couple of decent photos. So I, I've been thinking about this links for a while now. <laughs> um, but anyway, side, side story. Uh, I've been doing photography full time uh, for about two years. And before that, I did a lot of other different stuff. Um, I was actually a, um, an analyst within the education field and um, uh, when I picked up uh, a camera a few years back, uh, it, it felt like it, I don't know. I, I, I was I, I was I felt like this is my passion, and so like oh, after a while, I, I quit um, basically, and uh, I've been doing fr freelance for the past two years full time. I mean, and, that must have taken a lot yeah. of courage just to quit yeah. your day job and go photography full time. And it's not like data analysis is like um, the best way to transition into photography. It's like polar opposites, creativity exactly. and data. Yeah, so, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Very so, brave decision. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, 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 was, um, it was a big step for sure. And uh, it's definitely tough work to, to make sure uh, you have enough job to, to get you by. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's been very very interesting and, and very educational. So I'm shooting mostly um, in the mountains. That's where I like it the most, doing like outdoor photography, working with brands of all different kinds. Been doing a little bit of portraits, weddings, uh, product shots, corporate shots. Uh, and I'm trying to do more film as well. So um, I'm um, doing some shoots with uh, with colleagues and and learning by them mm -hmm. through tutorials and and such so yeah based in stockholm sweden uh like to travel all around europe but i'm staying mostly in like the northern parts of europe uh scandinavia and uh, it's nice and cold Arnold. yeah exactly i like the cold i like the yes winter. finally yeah. someone yes <laughs> thank you yeah. oh can't stand the heat like the sun is just yeah. beaming into the windows i'm like sweating yeah, same, oh. same. anyway mm. right yeah we do have um just before we go continue we do have yeah. some folks joining us in the chat and 
as always, if you have questions, this is a live format. Like, this is not TV. You can ask questions. Oh, this went all interactive. I didn't press the red button. Yes, it's interactive. Ask questions, and I will try to forward them to Benny and interrupt him in the worst possible ways. And hopefully we can answer your questions right away. And also, thank you for joining us from Malaysia. I see a lot of students who are watching the stream, so I hope you can catch some of the pro tips we will show you, or he will show you today. Right. Okay, so let's take a look at your Instagram there. We can already mm -hmm. see some of your work. And is that what we will also look at today in the tips you will share? Yeah, I mean, more or less. Uh, the title for for this um, session is how to make your landscape images pop mm -hmm. and also how to get this like moody look that I'm trying to have like a consistent look and something I've been working on uh, over the past years. Um, yeah, coming from the Instagram field and and sort of learning the, the photography um, craft from there. Um, so yeah, um, that's that is more or less what I will go through. The chat says, "Make it pop." Yes, that's yeah. Right. Make it pop. Yeah, just make it pop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So if you want to jump right into it, or we can also, if you rather want to uh, have a look at some of the images, whatever you like. This is your stage. We can. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I can show just quickly, briefly, like this okay. this mm -hmm. kind of style that I'm. Uh, what, what kind of um, when I'm editing, I, I try to, uh, this, this will be a, an introduction to, to what I will cover today. So I try to get like out from, I don't want to be anywhere near, you know, the straight out of camera look necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to add some mood and add some, you know, I want it to be full of emotions without, you know, completely changing the whole scene. Uh, but, you know, uh, I want to have my touch on on all the images, um, slightly desaturated and not so high in contrast and very smooth. Some people might say it's cinematic. Uh, I'm not totally sure, but you know that 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 is probably got some elements from there. So yeah, so I'll go through about six tools and there's some small like techniques here and there and how you can combine those techniques to get to achieve the result you want to have. That sounds like a great time. I can't wait. Yeah. And you will do this in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic? Uh, Lightroom CC. Okay. So just for you, those people who haven't... Oh, sorry. Lightroom Classic. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Okay. There's so many different names. So yeah. like, oh, the names. How many names would you like to have for your apps? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. There are two versions. Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic is basically the one you are used to before we introduced Lightroom CC. And Lightroom CC is the new version, which is more streamlined. And it also syncs with your phone and tablet and all the devices. And it stores the photos in the cloud. And it's really easy to get into. So if you want to get started with Lightroom, perhaps pick Lightroom CC instead of the uh, classic one, because it's much easier. Hey. <laughs> all right. So Lightroom Classic today. Well, then. Let's yeah. Let's jump right into it. Yeah, sure. Uh, yep. I'm just going to move this. I think my image is over here. So basically, this is uh, an image I shot from a helicopter just a few weeks ago. I was up in Swedish Lapland. And um, um, as you can see, the, the autumn was quite far in. And I want to show you with this image and a few images uh, that like how you can kill a blue sky. That's that's more or less uh, something I always, you know, remove or at least uh, make it less prominent. Um, so you see this bit here. I can show you two ways on how to, to deal with this. And let me see, I'm just gonna move this so I can focus. Uh, here we go. So if you use the, I believe it's called a radial filter, you can locally change stuff in here and make sure you hit this invert, otherwise you're gonna affect the rest of the image and not the, not 
what we have in here, the marked area. And I will try to go to dehaze and pull the slider to the left and see what it does with the sky. Mm -hmm. You can even have it, you see, maybe that's a little bit too much. It's gonna be like a Y, I mean, it could be like that. Uh, but that's that's like the, the fast way to do it. And uh, I mean, maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's take it off, maybe use a little bit. But for this, and you can also work with I mean, the highlights, you can up the highlights as well, but the sky is going to be probably a little bit too crushed here. You can also work with the exposure, you see as well. But for this particular shot, I found the easiest way to, to deal with this, let me remove that one, is actually to go into the tone curve where you control the shadows and the highlights. So you can see that already put in, um, uh, uh, my, my, my preset, uh, but to deal with the sky here, you see, I would pull this slider down to the right, boom, it's gone. And I mean, it doesn't work for, for, yeah, it doesn't work for everything, but I mean, if, if this is the kind of look you're after, you know, desaturated, um, kind of a moody look, it works uh, perfectly. So that's my first tip. Uh, either the radial filter working here locally using the dehaze slider, um, and you can also work with the highlights and the exposure, and otherwise use the, the tone curve and, and basically crush the highlights. Yep. And I don't know if there's any questions, otherwise I can, I will move on to another example. Uh, so let's, here we have a really happy sky. So this is typically like an image. I usually shoot during sunrise and sunset uh, for, obvious for obvious reasons, but also this reason I don't want to have, you know, uh, too, it, it's way too happy for me. But, I mean, basically, for this image, you could just pull the blue slider down and go into the U, just make it a little bit more my touch, maybe something like that. And like all of a sudden, it's, it's way more aesthetically appealing for me, at least. That fits my style. And I mean, for this, we had two different images. For the other image, it made more sense to just use the highlight, uh, use the tone curve. I mean, we could, but it's not going to affect the image the sa same way here. Um, so this is a different case we're dealing with. I mean, there's also a possibility to go in. If you don't want to, if, if you don't want to affect the whole image in this image, you basically have all the blues in the sky. So you don't need this radial filter, but you could just pull the saturation down sorry, press invert and see what happens. You lose all the information. It doesn't really look that real. Um, um, but for this image, I mean, it's a super simple thing to do, but you know, uh, it works, especially if you're working in raw, which you should do, shooting raw images. Uh, so that's how you can kill a blue sky in two different ways. I mean, that easy usually i would say like who blue sky but sometimes if you want to achieve this certain look or certain mood yes absolutely kill that blue sky uh, my yeah. personal favorite is really to go into the hs uh, secondaries and do it that way and use um yeah. the um color temperature to bring back yeah. or remove the sky but it's great to see like you can also do it with the curve uh tonal yeah. curve filter and like, as always, there are a million different ways to achieve mm. a similar effect in Photoshop and Lightroom and pretty much every Adobe app. So, um, I mean, this is fantastic. Yeah. And just yeah. to clear up some confusion in the chat, some people are joining us from Malaysia, I think, and they are, mm. have, this is an activity, so they have to say their names in the chat so the teachers know they're joining this. So if you're wondering why some peop people are joining and typing their name, that's why. <laughs> I try to look past those names and uh, find the questions you write to us anyway. Right. Yeah. 
let's move on to the next tool. Um, we're going to have a look at something I use a lot, and I think a lot of colleagues of mine as well. Uh, we're using this gradient filter, and I would put this into the context of composition. This image you have here, also shot from the same session, um, is a road, basically. And what you want to do is you want to have the viewer uh, to to, to view your image, like the, you want the viewer to view your image, the center of the image, uh, and you want to emphasize this uh, with the help of the edit. So basically what you do is you take this slider, make sure you clear all the uh, stuff that was there since before. You know, why it doesn't clear it. Um, and what you do is basically you pull the exposure down and make sure when you're using this tool, like if you're just using it like that and not unfolding it, it's going to be too sharp, right? So make sure you pull it a bit further into the image. So maybe that's a little bit too much, but we can start off somewhere around there and somewhere around here. So, um, so basically you have multiple ways to guide the eye of the viewer. One thing is leading yeah. lines, exactly. the road, but also yep. you're playing with contrast and mm -hmm. brightness to guide the viewer's eye. Do you, um, I see the image is slightly, it looks a bit tilted or the perspective could be adjusted. Do you sometimes also go to Photoshop uh, to edit your work or do you mostly stay in Lightroom for this? Uh, I mean, more and more to Photoshop because, but I think I, I use mo mostly Photoshop for like cleaning up purposes. Mm. Uh, and also for if you want to do like a collage of, of images, uh, putting them together. But I mean, you could do like stitching if you're shooting like a panorama, for right. example, in, in Lightroom or HDR merch if you're shooting an, an apartment or something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm staying like for the basics, 85% um, of the time I'm staying in Lightroom. Um, there, there's a few other techniques as well that you can use to, you know, emphasize uh, um, this, you know, road, um, having, having, have, making it look, make it look longer and make it sort of pop. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the radio filter here and um, up in the exposure and make sure you have it on like 50 or if you go below 50, if you go like this, this got how it kind of looks like. So it, it's Perfect. way, yeah, way too sharp. So be careful with that. And I mean, you can even, when you're adding, uh, when you're adding exposure or, or making it brighter, then you make sure that you get like the contrast still there. You can maybe put, pull the blacks down a little bit, even up some clarity just to, you know, uh, make it even more visible. And so it's a before and after. This, this might be obvious for a pro like you and some of yeah. the people in the chat, but just as a reminder, the um, filters, like the, the masks at the top, they allow you to target specific areas of the images like using an ellipse, using a gradient, also using a yep. brush. So you can yep. only apply the filter using the sliders on the right to that certain portion of the image instead of the entire image all at once. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And that's a, that's a huge benefit, I think. And something, I mean, you can, you can, I mean, it's really great if you want to maintain like the same kind of look that you had. For example, my clarity is always down 25. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, we're going to go over that, but I want to emphasize something in the image. Maybe mm -hmm. I want, want to have the clarity up 25 uh, and I can still have like the same kind of feel in my images, uh, but also have it, have it pop. <laughs> Just make it pop. Yeah. And there also was a question, um, not sure if I missed this, but what is your camera, Benny? Um, no, I haven't gone over that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm using a Canon EOS R. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's also important to talk, talk about the lenses. So it's basically a mirrorless camera. It's not the latest. They have, uh, I think, EOS R6 and 5, if I'm not wrong, uh, which they just launched. But basically, it's quite lightweight. Um, the ISO is better than on the Canon 6D, which I had before. And it it's um, shooting faster and uh, you know, the overall quality of the image is is better. And it also has the flip screen, which is good for many purposes. If you're shooting low angle or doing video and um, I'm, I'm mm. using mostly a 2470 2.8 and using a 2.8 instead of a f4 um, is, is so much better, especially in low light and like the depth of field is way better. Uh, that that's like my go-to setup. I also have a 7200 from Sigma, uh, which I'm using. Uh, it's more more or less and a drone. <laughs> and a drone, nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, let's jump to the next. Yes, tip. more pro tips. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I think this is kind of a new feature. Um, as you can see, I already edited this um, image uh, and you can see that the, the color of the tent uh, changed a little bit, but don't worry about that. We're going to actually use um, this. Uh, I forgot the name. It's called an adjustment brush which you can access through just hitting the K. Um, so what I want to do is, uh, since you can see this is uh, not so prominent in the image, and especially for like social media, you want something in the image to pop. Um, and in this case, these people are popping a little bit, but if we were to change the color on this uh, tent, we could do it quite easily and, and it's going to affect uh, the overall um, look of the image. So I'm going to this adjustment brush uh, right there. You can take this off and then you'll have to hit show selected mask overlay just to make sure you know where you where you are painting. Uh, so if I start to paint here, and if you hold command on, on a MacBook, I don't know, on a PC, it will help you to keep within, you know, the area you want to paint, which is the tent. So I'm basically painting, we're going to paint the whole tent. And I'm holding down the command. If you are drawing outside of the tent, we can easily fix that which I'll show you in a second. But for now, just keep the command pressed while and you're Do painting. you work on trackpad or with mouse or graphics tablet? Uh, I'm actually working on my laptop. That's <gasps> how I started. Yeah, I know. Uh, and yeah, still keeping the command down. And you see we're getting pretty close to covering up this whole tent um, and you see that it's easier to paint the parts of the tent that's not like having too much highlights which is more in the shadow so and we're gonna paint this bit as well almost there So this red color is only, so you can see uh, where you painted basically. So if you, instead of uh, uh, hitting the command, you hit option on a Mac. Um, sorry, uh, that didn't work out. I don't know why it's not working now. Should be able to hit to get the minus sign. I'm actually not, don't know why it's not working now. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, anyway, I have to skip that part. But for this image, it's fine. Uh, it's not going to show. It's too far away. So what we do is uh, we can... 
untick the show selected mask overlay. And we can start by changing the U on this slider. You can see that it only affects the tent. So you can go crazy, crazy like that, crazy purple. But it's a disco for this tent. Image, yeah, disco <laughs> tent. For this image, I wanted to have something like greenish. I think it fits pretty well. And you can also change the saturation over here. Let's just um, zoom out for a second and see how it looks like. Uh, you can play this. And I think it looks pretty nice. Um, here's the before and after. Um, you can definitely see that the pen is popping a lot more. So yeah, that's that's my that's my tip, and I think it's a pretty new feature. Uh, so you're only affecting the tent by using the adjustment brush, and as the difference between this one, which we used before radial filter, is that this brush you can actually be very precise. And probably and even more if you just have a graphics tablet where you can have a stylus and really get in there. Yeah, um, exactly. Using the paintbrush. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's that. Uh, I can show you another image where I actually already done it. And how quickly, uh, um, how do you show the before and after on the same page? Oh, I was just about to say that. Uh, if you just press the Y on your keyboard, then you will have the before and after, and you have some different versions here. If you, uh, yeah, no, you have to, there are some different versions. You can show it like one above and one below as well. Um, maybe this one, no. Uh, the one next to it. Uh, yeah. Left. That one, is it? No. Oh, you should be, uh, click on the flyout menu next to those two Ys. There should be like a small, yeah, that one. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, top, bottom. Aha. Okay. But, uh, but let's see, I don't know, maybe it's because. This I, is just where you can switch back to the before and after image. Yeah. Yeah, you have some different versions where you can, hmm, it's weird. Uh, but anyway, it should be. I'm, I'm, basically, I'm mostly using the. Um, yeah, the the Y, mm -hmm. and yeah, and here's um, another image, which I did the same thing with. Uh, I can show you how it looked before. Uh, if we go to the. And meanwhile, the chat is having a whole conversation about camera lenses and oh. the advantages and disadvantages of uh, DSLRs and mirrorless and... Brrr. Yeah, we're stuck there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so here's yeah. The, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> the other, uh, other look. So it's quite a big change on, on the tent. Um, if there is not... Another question, we can move on to the next one. Um, no, at the moment they are really talking about their cameras yeah. and how well. one is more expensive and better used for a certain application, but I don't think there are any questions around the um, Lightroom workflow, at least at the second. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So um, this is a pretty basic one, but I think it's something um, that I use like all of the time. Uh, a lot of the times I'm shooting uh, people um, in um, in like an outdoor environment. Here's, here's actually a shot of me. Um, and I wanted to show you how you can get a smooth skin by using the radial filter. So basically, you, you, you pull on the radial filter, something like this. You don't want to have it too tight because you have the faded thing on over here. And if you want to have a s smooth look, you can you can do you can pull it like this wide. And um, what I do is I go to clarity and I pull down the clarity. You can see that my skin is changing 
But I think we have a, a lag going on at the moment because it's not yeah, changing. I don't think that's coming across. Have you inverted yeah. the... Um... No, you didn't. Do you, you have any what? adjustment brushes? Or is the softness perhaps too big? So... Um. Yeah, change change the slider where where we can actually see what's oh, happening. Oh, sorry, with sorry, you. sorry. I didn't press the inverts. Oh, wow. sorry, my bad. Classic. So you <laughs> need to stop. Otherwise, you're you're changing the, up the whole uh, the rest of the image instead of this. Right. So you can see that I'm getting more of a, like a baby face look now. <laughs> uh, do you moisturize? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, you don't want to do it too much. Uh, but if we have a look at uh, Let's see if you can see the difference from here to there. It's quite quite a big change after all. I mean, this image is not shot on close, super close range. Uh, but it, it, w if you shoot very close up, it's going to show even more. Mm -hmm. But um, what you can do is when you <clears throat> when you add the smoothness by pulling the clarity slider to the left, you also lose some of the contrast. So I like to put put in some contrast, maybe even pull the blacks down, not too much, <clears throat> a little bit. And this is just before yeah. we continue. This is one thing that people often tend to forget that you can actually pull back clarity. Yeah. You don't have to increase it all the time. Uh, you can exactly. also pull it back. And um, clarity is really just like a bit of salt in your soup. A bit of clarity yeah. is really great. But yeah. if the original dish doesn't taste great, you can't fix it by adding salt and more salt yeah. and more salt. However, on yeah. the other side, texture, which is a different slider, I think you will get into that in a moment. Yeah. Texture exactly. is a different thing. That's like garlic bread. You can't have enough <laughs> of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't know the exact, uh, exactly, the exact um, differences between the texture and oh. the clarity. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. clarity uh, is sort of the mid-range uh, contrast. It improves the bigger details in the mid-range of the photo, like the medium grays. Texture, right. on the other hand, is, is similar to clarity, but it improves the finer details. So, if you increase texture, it shouldn't really change like the overall brightness of your photo, whereas clarity can sometimes change the overall brightness of your photo, something that mm. texture doesn't do. So texture yeah. really allows you to get into the fine details instead of focusing on the bigger um, um, aspects of the image, which clarity does. And if you really just uh, slide them left and right, both uh, sliders, you can find out um, how they behave. And honestly, texture, yeah. you can't have enough of that, <laughs> if you I ask me. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, that's great. Uh, so this is making uh, your face looks, uh, sorry, uh, look a bit more smooth. Uh, Wish see. I could have that in real life. Yeah, exactly. So this is the before and after. Oh, now I have another thing going on here with the before and after. But that's also, also I've changed uh, the the whole you know with my preset. Um, but yeah, so if you want to have it, I mean sometimes, for example, if you're shooting someone with a lot of wrinkles, maybe you want to emphasize the wrinkles. What if it's like an old fisherman, um, very stereotypical? But maybe you want to pull the slider to the right instead. Yes. Yeah, I can go bananas and it's going to look really weird. But, you know, every little thing that you have there in the mid range, you said the details in the mm -hmm. mid range, it's going to it's going to show. So, I mean, if if you want to show off your beard a little bit more, for example, uh, it, it definitely will show more if you pull the slider that way. And maybe we can ease up on the shadows in that case and the contrast. We don't need that so much. And let me just, we can zoom out and you can see the difference, quite a big difference uh, over here, quite prominent. Absolutely. It's yeah. Like a whole different image. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also the spot removal, When since we're talking about faces, mm -hmm. um, you have two different versions. You have the heel and the clone. 
So for this uh, for this particular uh, image, uh, both are gonna do a very good job. Uh, let's just show you if I do the heel, it's gonna create like a similar uh, something to cover up cover it up naturally, and you will see that it did a really good job. And if I'm using sorry wrong tool, if I'm using uh, the clone instead. It's just going to take one piece and, you know, stitch it in from you. I mean, you could manually shift. <laughs> Perfect. It. Yeah. Who exactly. wouldn't want some lip on your cheek? <laughs> exactly. So this is typically a, a pretty, a, I mean, simple cleanup job. If it were to be 30 pimples there and like in, in various shapes and forms, I would definitely move to Photoshop and, and have it clean up there. And it requ would require uh, a lot more for, from me. And I want to sh show you one last thing. This is something I do when I shoot portraits, which is actually a big part of my work. Uh, I go to the adjustment brush, pull the command. Let's see if the See, it works now. I pull down the option key and then I can erase wh what I just painted there. Oh, so for, I see. Yeah, yeah. So for now, but this one is slightly too big. What I do is I paint, paint here and I'm going to make them more white. So I go into the custom settings and there's something called actually T teeth whitening, which I use both for the teeth and for the the white part in your eye. Um, so it's, you can see, I'm gonna make the same thing. Now I don't have the adjustment, uh, sorry, the selected mask overlay, but it's fine for now, cause it's, uh, it's not gonna show anyway if I'm a little bit sloppy. Um, let's put it down. And you can see that my eyes are popping a lot more. Sorry, going back and forth. Maybe a little bit too close. You can definitely see the change. I mean, the look and of here is a bit deceiving because the overall image looks darker, but in this yeah, case, yeah. the eyes stay the same brightness. So actually yeah. the eyes look brighter in the second image. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but because you've darkened right. the entire image, it looks like yeah. they're about the same. So I don't yeah, see a difference. Exactly. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because of the overall preset I already put on. So maybe and I should is that, that um, a default that preset, default. that uh, teeth whitening? Is that a default thing? Yeah, or? that's a default thing. Okay. Yeah. I haven't played around that much with it because I, I found it so useful. Yeah, you can definitely see in Jackie is a, a slightly different yeah, yeah. color. Well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, trying to keep up with the time here as well. But, 20 minutes. Uh, Just a quick reminder, yeah. if you're watching this on YouTube, come on over to Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. Join the chat, say hi, and then we can see your questions. Perfect. So this is another image from uh, Sorek up in Lapland. And you see this mountain here. So in this case, uh, I wouldn't want to make this smoother. I want to make it more prominent because this is obviously the focus for the image. Make sure to clear everything by just hitting this effect. Uh, and remember to put in invert. And in this case, I would use the texture slider. And we're going to move a little bit closer. You see what the texture slider does? That looks like baby skin <laughs> and we want to really emphasize the bit, bit of the image not just because it's in the middle or it's the center it's actually something that uh it's got a lot of structure into it what you what you can do is to to emphasize it even more as i told you before you can down the blacks a little bit up the contrast maybe even the shadows and you can even uh, you can add as many radio filters as you want. And this, I can even move. this might not come across on stream perfectly well because we do have some YouTube compression. And of course, like oh, our okay. screen sharing software does add some compression. So if you don't see a difference, that's 
unfortunately due to the stream. But if you do it on your images, yeah. you will see a difference. And it also helps okay. to zoom in so you can really see the individual and yeah. pixels uh, work at 100%. Also, when sharpening your images, zoom into 100% because that's the only way where you can really see how it will look later on. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you can even, you know, to to add to add a bit of bit more of a contrast. You can, you see, I'm I'm working with multiple radial filters here. Uh, you press invert. Make sure to press invert, and you I can up just with exposure. It's pretty far away in the image, so, so you can be pretty sloppy and still get a really good result. So let's have a look at the before and after. You can see the difference on the on the mountain here. You can see quite mm -hmm. a big difference. It's so much more prominent on on the uh, on the right hand side. And we have a question in the chat. I'm wondering yeah. if a good if good hardware or even a good camera really makes the editing a, a huge difference. If it makes a difference, yes, yes, it does. Um, you don't yeah. need the most powerful um, gaming computer in the world, but um, if you're doing this on a 2012 MacBook Air, perhaps you are not getting the best experience ever. So um, check the minimum requirements on Adobe.com and they will let you know what's like the minimum and what's recommended. And uh, yeah. Yeah. But no so need here's to get the latest Mac. Yeah, so here's an image from Chamonix, France, and uh, I caught this on, let's see, uh, I can see it's uh, on, actually just on 53 millimeters. Yeah, we were quite high at the top of the mountain. And uh, yeah, so I thought it was actually like 200 millimeters or something. But let's just, you know, here I would definitely go in and emphasize, you know, this texture. This is the most interesting thing in the image, I think. So I will do the same thing here. Make sure you clear all the pre or something like this before. Just clear it, press invert, tick that box, try the texture again. And I mean, you could pull it quite a lot. You see that it almost looks cracked now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think it looks still pretty natural. If you pull down the shadows, it's not going to affect that much because it's pretty bright. What about exposure? But you still want to have it pretty lit. So, I mean, you still want to have it like the center of attention, like a, like a spotlight over here. Uh, I think it's quite appealing to the eye. So, you see, I'm quite sloppy when it comes to this. It's because I have the fade on and it's going to affect more uh, in the center than on the sides could be go good to to have that across. And I, I wouldn't do, I mean, I can try the clarity slider and you see it definitely looks like the shadows are increasing on mm -hmm. this one. Um, it's actually doing a pretty good job. And there's actually another slider, but I'm gonna save that for uh, the next image. Yes. Yes. Uh, so let's see the before and after see if it's clear or not uh let's see if we can have them there's uh see if we can have them left and right yeah this is but then they switch side i don't know why they did um you, uh, there should be a button yeah that one this one yeah there we go yeah so you can see um uh, I think it, I think it looks better when you zoom out. Actually, uh, you can see the difference. Yeah, I mean, for texture, right. you have to zoom in, but for if you just want to yeah. see the general image, you, of course, you have to zoom out so you can yeah. see everything. And do you always have like the idea when you, when you when you're sitting there and when you're shooting this yeah. photo, do you already yeah. know like, oh, I could uh, increase the texture here and the lightness there, or is it really when you come back home and start editing those images? I mean, for 90% of the time, you know what you're going to do with the image. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, so I'm thinking texture. That's my like first word when I see this, you know, this scene when I'm shooting it. 
my eyes get stuck on the cracks there in the in the snow. So so yeah, definitely. Most of the times, ninety percent of the time, you you know what you're gonna do uh, post. Right, and of course, I guess it makes it easier in the post production if you already know what you would like to yeah. do when you take the photo. Uh, definitely, yeah. Right. I mean, I could have shot it in 200 millimeters at the time. I don't remember if I had it on me and mm. I could do, for, for example, like an abstract print out of it and just, you know, zoom in on, on these parts, which are quite dramatic, I would say. It's a glacier, so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I see that we have 15 minutes left, so I can <laughs> jump over to the next image. And uh, Angus is asking, are there any countries you haven't been to or that you would like to visit? Oh, well, plenty. But, you know, uh, I would like to go to, to Greenland if we are talking like colder temperatures. Uh, it's so remote. Svalbard is all, also on the list. And um, I mean, in terms of warmer countries, I haven't even visited the African continent. Right. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to explore there. But otherwise, like Brazil or like Colombia, I've seen some like cool images from there in the jungle. That would be, uh, yeah, that would, I would be stoked to go there and, uh, and shoot. Otherwise, Canada uh, has so many different, you know, landscapes, very similar to, to Sweden, some of them, but it's like Sweden on steroids, <laughs> like the mountains. Mountains are so much bigger. And oh, Alaska, so yes. Better. Yeah, Alaska. Yeah. So, but that leads me on to if you didn't have another question, um, this image is actually from Canada. So I had the pleasure, the opportunity of going with uh, with a brand I'm working with. Um, so this is from Tunson National Park up in Yokan Territory, uh, the uh, in the Gold Rush area. Uh, where you find the, the the grizzly bears and whatnot. <laughs> yes, we didn't, we didn't see any any at the time. Uh, you can you can see that I already put on my sort of moody preset. I have a few different ones that I'm using. But what I want to do here is I want to keep this. You know, this is pretty overexposed. This uh, you know uh, image. The sun was uh, I mean way up. I don't know, maybe it was like 10 in the morning, it was autumn, it was still, you know, a few hours in and I'm shooting towards the sun. Uh -huh. um, but are those, are those colors, are they actually clipping or can you recover them? Uh, uh, I, I don't think you can actually recover them because you can see the slider here, the highlight slider is already on ah, 66. Okay. 66. So I thought I, I might just go the other way. Uh, it would actually okay. be easy for me maybe but we see what happens i'm affecting the whole image if i'm using this highlights and i want to keep a little bit of the information on top of the mountains here because this is the part we're going to bring back to life all right yes. i'm going to start off yeah by doing using a technique the radio filter which we used before and just using the dehaze thing Sorry, need to put inverted or not inverted. Invert, always, uh, and you can see it's doing a pretty good job, right? Uh, I'm just gonna remove these clouds. So just because it's a bit difficult to wrap your mind around that, you yeah. are decreasing the dehaze slider, so you actually slider, so you're actually increasing the haze. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Yeah. Well put. You're decrease dehaze slider. Uh, what? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I always found that peculiar. This. <laughs> I mean, normally you're supposed to use it to dehaze an image, but I suppose yeah. nobody can stop you from hazing an image. No, that's something. Yeah, right. exactly. from adding yeah. haze to an image. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's done a pretty good job there. So now the I wouldn't say the magic, but this is what's gonna bring back our mountain, the texture in the mountain and some of the contrast in the mountain back. So make sure you have it in the frame here in the within this area. 
press effect so you don't have anything since before there and now you actually pull in the dehaze slide slider sorry press invert that's why uh, adobe invented got... the checkbox to yeah <laughs> so you see as i go you can see more and more coming wow. back wow. yeah and but you can also see that it's having sort of like a greenish tint to it so i would try to change that by using these oh maybe a little bit warmth a little bit more magenta hopefully this shows mm -hmm. through as well for the yes viewers um but yeah let's see if we can see how it looks like yeah so from there to there huge difference huge difference and you don't want to overdo it still i mean you could add blacks you could add texture you can do a lot of things but you want to have it make have it look natural maybe well, a little bit do you black. actually want to add texture the, to this part of the image it seems very smooth so yeah but still uh, i mean it's i think you want to emphasize the rays mm. uh so that it's more about getting you know the rays back than maybe like the actual you know uh texture in the mountain i think that effect makes it uh, a lot more dramatic so if we have a look at the before and after i think this image is all about the rays yeah uh, yeah so i think that did a pretty good job so just to recap using the radio filter pull in the dehaze slider to the right instead of left uh, i think it did a pretty good job and just cleaning up all the clouds with the radio filter using the dehaze slider the other way you're decreasing it and there was a question in the chat this might not be useful for this image because we don't have a lot of color but um yeah. uh, who said that hang on it says about oh yeah I noticed that you don't touch the color sliders in HSL, Sandrine asked. Is that intentional? Yeah, uh, yeah this one. Uh, I already done that before because I oh. have my preset on. Okay. Yeah, that's why. But I mean, we can we can clear this. We can clear this up. Uh, I just wanted to, just for the sake of it, to. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to have like an overall good looking image uh and we don't have that much time so <laughs> right we did it beforehand but i mean you can see the before and after mm -hmm. you can see i have much more of a like a greenish tint um and uh, i mean i got rid of all the mag magenta uh and desaturating mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have and colors that you really don't like in the images? I know some photographers yeah. like, I don't like blue and I don't like purple. Yeah. Are there some colors yeah. that you try to um, yeah. get rid of? Uh, I mean, I think like magenta, like for a, like a super magenta sky or like pinkish mm -hmm. is really pleasing for the eye. But just for my images, it's just become, you know, my way of uh, expressing myself has been so consistent throughout the years that it's, you know, be be have become second nature. So I don't necessarily, or I don't post anything with those kind of colors unless I can color correct them afterwards. Uh, but I find it, re I find those colors really pleasing to look at. So it's two different med mediums for me. Uh, but I mean, if you're uh, delivering images for a client, they don't necessarily want your kind of style. Sometimes they want your style, uh, like you have on Instagram, for example. But then I make sure to have much of a more, you know, natural look on the images, not changing, not going totally crazy with changing the colors and uh, less moody. Uh, in general, companies want a, a slightly more happier images, you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you need to be flexible um, in terms of you need to know, know how what you're doing when you're editing, um, so you can actually just do small uh, adjustments if that's you know required from you. Right, and do you send um, when you're finished? How do you yep. how do you export it? Do you also send the clients like the 
raw file with the sidecar or is it do you set them just a jpeg or how does that work uh i, I send them just a jpeg normally i export the images uh in like a low jpeg mm -hmm. uh, and i put them all in in a program so they can easily you know uh, access it through the web and they can compare all the images uh, and, and they can even you know uh, favorite mark the images they like and then i export it again and sometimes i ask do you know what quality you want it is it for the, your website what right. are you going to use it for? so you adjust accordingly and uh, i mean if it's for print sometimes tiff is better mm -hmm. so yeah yeah you're avoiding jpeg compression basically with tiff yeah yeah and of course with um the new Lightroom CC, you can actually share your library with them and they can have it online. Yeah, that's true. I actually done that one. Out. Yeah. But yeah. no need to save different versions, everything. And also just one thing that's really, really cool. Lightroom CC is available in your browser. So anywhere where you go and anywhere where you have internet access, you can start editing your images. Something you can't do with Lightroom Classic. So, for example, you're going to a client and they're like, okay, let's take a look at the images and then you can just go to lightroom.adobe.com and boop, yep. you have all your images. So, <laughs> yeah. sometimes, and I notice you mostly use uh, Classic because I suppose you have like a lot of images and you want to organize them. So, Classic really works for you better. Do you have, like, how do you organize your uh, files? Uh, do you use collections and how does that work? That's a good question. Uh, um, and catalogs and everything yeah exactly i have I, I mean it's it's not good to have just one big catalog and if you lose the whole mm. catalog you will lose all your images uh, but obviously you need to have backup maybe an external hard drive another one and and, and obviously in the cloud uh, so i have an external um, uh, i have basically uh, a service i'm paying for so all my mm -hmm. images are backed up uh, so what I do is uh, I, I I have to work with multiple hard drives, but I'm, I'm having like a current one that I'm working on. That with, that's where I put all my work, and I put it through um, in the order of the date when it was shot. And if I do uh, sometimes I do collections, uh, you know, just to sort out the the images uh, if i want to access them like just the 10 images out of 500 that i want to use for something so mm -hmm. i can easily access them otherwise i'm using all the you know um the the, the i usually put th um three stars uh on the images i think is worth having a go at and then five stars for the rest uh sorry five stars after i'm done with the second edit okay so, sort of narrow it down <laughs> Uh, I think uh, f for me that works. So yeah, basically keeping it in order through dates. Um, and after a while you get pretty good at it. You can mm -hmm. remember like what, when did I shoot this? It was like 2020, March. Uh, yeah. So you just anyway. have to ask yourself when you organize your photos, what would Benny do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> True that. Um, because we we are running out of time, just one last thing. If you can't be bothered with all the backup drives and everything, of course, Photoshop CC, uh, the Photoshop Lightroom CC will take care of that. So you can just back them up to the cloud and that's it. So if you uh, don't want to use like hard drives and shuffle them around and hope for the best that they don't crash or stop working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The cloud is thing. there for you. Anyway. Right. Do you have any last tips you want to share? Because we are running out of time. Yeah. Well, have we covered yeah, them all? Yeah. If you want to connect, uh, you can just, uh, you know, uh, DM me on my Instagram, Benny Bystrom, uh, in one word, um, or uh, reach out on email or however you want to. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer your questions from this live session. So if you have any other questions. Right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I mean, it was a fa fantastic stream. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, this is not the last stream, neither for today nor for tomorrow, because later today we will have the French stream, which actually starts in 30 seconds. <laughs> and <laughs> also the US streams uh, later today. And tomorrow, of course, we will have another great stream from the UK. 
and it will be all about fi a guide to finding one's style in which uh, they will talk about experimenting and playing with Illustrator to find one's unique voice. That sounds exciting. I hope I don't have to host that one because it's getting really warm in here and I'm sweating and I I have to close the window. Anyway, it's it's a whole process. Um, let's look at the chat for any last minute questions. Um, what's the general pixel size of your images? Um, you mean after export? What? It Export? says, yeah, what's, yeah, I suppose. Um, well, uh, I mean, the JPEG size for like, in general, for, I think like for uploading on Instagram is like three megabytes. You can even do like 1.5 megabytes. Uh, oh no, the raw, they're talking about the raw file. Like what's the pixel size oh. the dimensions of the raw file? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's have a look. Or how many megapixels, I guess. Yeah. 6,720 by 4,480. There you go. All right. Yeah. And yes, they're saying good stream, great content stream, tips and comments today. Um, yes. Are all of our Lightroom portfolios online automatically in Lightroom CC? Of course. Online as in shared in the cloud, yes. Um, online as in everybody can access them, no, of course not. And um, yeah, I think that's every question. Oh, one last question. Okay, that's the last one and then we'll say our goodbyes. Um, yeah. There is that common feeling of this edit is not quite there. How do you tackle this problem? So perhaps you're, you have this feeling of something isn't quite right, but you don't know what it is. How to yeah, uh, I think it's I think it's like a trial and error. You need to really uh, I mean have a look at images. If you have an image in your mind that you or like an a actual image that you wanna like having it look the same way, you really need to go through all I mean all the different sliders in order to to learn what makes it not look exactly right. And it, it, it might take a while, you know. Um, but it's a, it's a really good thing watching tutorials on how to achieve a certain look, for example. There's actually one of, of, of me out there on YouTube somewhere. Oh. Um, so, no, there are two. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yes, yep. inspiration, reference images, it's like any other art form, like painting. You need reference images to get started. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, then, that is about all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you here. And perhaps we can invite you back, in the live, if you want to, oh, to, yeah. to dive deeper into the images and see more of that amazing work. And for those who are watching at home, the conversation doesn't stop here because we do have a Discord. I will post the link right there. Join the Discord. The link is also below every Adobe live stream. Just scroll down and you will see that link and you can click on that. Join the conversation, say hi, share your work, provide feedback between the streams, after the streams, before the streams and at any time of the day. We also have plenty of people joining us every day who are sharing their work. So give feedback, provide feedback, get feedback, anything you want to do. Right, that's it from us for today. We will be back tomorrow with a different host and a different guest. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.